Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is our first day on the job site. This is my son, Tyler, his uh, side job. This is his second side job that he's did. And this is just for uh, about a 10 by 15 area for a portion of it's gonna have a shed setting on top of it back in that corner where the block wall and the house meet. It'll just come right to the edge of that gate. So the gate will still be able to function. You end up with a little landing basically outside your shed. So his first day that he arrived here, he's just gonna remove all the grass. And he's capping some sprinkler heads. Now with that blue Christie's hot glue, you don't really need a primer because that stuff um, doesn't require it. I mean, it's a nice bonus if you use it, but it's not really necessary. Typically, I'll use the uh, primer if I'm uh, working with a pipe that's under constant pressure or if it's really old pipe that needs a lot of cleaning, then I'll use some primer. Right now he's got the DeWalt laser level out. Now he's establishing elevations. He set his string lines. He ran his string lines a little past his stakes. That way they won't interfere with the formwork and those lines can stay up through the whole process. And if you look closely at the way the string lines are tied, they're tied to the outside of the stake that way even if the stakes were inside the pour you could run your boards right on past them without the stake interfering with the uh, lumber As his string set, he's setting his lumber to the top of the string line. And he's got one kicker there off of that upright, right where the um, two, two ends of the two by fours meet. And then he's double checking it with a six foot Milwaukee level just to verify that he does have slope. Now if you really wanted to get real tricky with this setup, if you knew the exact size of the shed, you could actually um, do a little elevated monolithic pour with the surrounding concrete. You could go up like say an inch and a half if you knew exactly where the shed was going to set. That would ensure that water wouldn't go underneath the shed at all. However, then you have that little step you know inch and a half step going in the door so you know it's kind of you can't you just can't win That compactor was working so good that it vibrated the uh, ground, knocked the camera over. And I just had that plate compactor, the engine rebuilt. The piston was um, all scarred up and ended up having to get a new piston in there. Because it was really low on compression on the last job, so 
wasn't really hitting that hard and then it completely stopped running so now that he rebuilt the um, put a new piston in there the things got all kinds of combustions hitting like twice as hard you got some two inch dobies there underneath the Owens Corning pink bar 3 8 inch diameter comparable to half inch steel then he instead of doweling he dug underneath where it adjoins that concrete under the gate just kind of key weighted in there so this is ready to pour and then you know the footing from the block wall which is the best way to do a block whenever you have an opening in a block wall for a gate it's best to continue the footing all the way across and that's what they did there it looks like put the form oil so we can strip it today yep and the same time you can still use it right what'd you say still using the when you put the form oil uh-huh the wood is nice because you're gonna use it to the next job oh yeah exactly here's the form oil going on this is pour time this happens to be uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. It's about 90 degrees out. What is it? What are we doing? Just a little shed pad right here. And then I got like a little piece, but I'm gonna just fill it up in the wheelbarrow and run it over there. You got three yards for that? Well, this is like two, like, like a little over two yards, bro. I was gonna order two and a half, but Where? then right here, just the shed pad. That pad right there? Yeah, how much do you think it is? It's it, about a yard. A yard? Yeah. I got a little piece 13. over here too, though. Yeah. Two, two, two a little five. over two. Oh, oh, okay. It ends up being about two yards. And there is a little portion on the neighbor's property that will be getting wheelbarrowed in. Instead of dragging the hose all the way around and then to the na through the neighbor's side yard, we're just going to fill up. I think it took about two wheelbarrows on the side yard. You'll see a little bit of that too. Look how stiff this is going in. This is about a three inch slump. And it's the second pour of the day. Actually, my son poured on a previous job early in the morning. We finished that one out and then he came over here to knock this little side job out. You got Alex pumping it out Martin's pumping and the concrete that's gonna be going in here is a uh, 3500 psi and the reason they are pouring it that stiff is because uh, like I was saying this is the second job of the day and uh, they wanted to uh, knock it out and the good thing about pouring it this stiff is you're gonna have a lot less shrinkage so chances of cracking is a uh, you've alleviated those potential problems of shrinkage cracks basically it's a little more work to lay down however when it's this stiff but you get a better product so they were using the 10 foot aluminum screed board initially now they swapped out to the six foot milwaukee red stick Here's a load going into the wheelbarrow. This is coming around to the neighbor's house. There's a small strip along uh, where the sidewalk meets the block wall. Yeah, because it was so stiff, um, there's not much splattering happening at all. You could just about use that this particular mix for a uh, dry pack non-shrink grout whenever you get your mortar mix or any kind of a mix this stiff it's basically a non-shrink grout Room it, baby, room it. Yes.
Yeah, as you can see, the concrete pump are still out front. They've already got a nice edge on it, and it's uh, Fresnoing. So you can see that's going off pretty quickly. I don't think they're going to beat the pumper out of here on this job, but it's going to be close. Even though this is going to have a shed sitting on top of it, it's going to be an all broom finish. I mean, it's nice to have a smooth finish where underneath your shed for easy cleanup, but a portion of this will be out in the um, elements. So you want a non-slip on it, basically, which is a broom finish or sand wash. There's many finishes you could do that are non-slip besides broom, but a broom is a nice, uh, clean, simple one. Oh, it looks like the pumper has left. And now he's going over this with his funny float. And see all the lines it's leaving in it? It's because uh, Juan likes to notch the bottom of his floats. Because uh, he feels like in, in those little notches that you can see, that's uh, all cream filling up so it's easier to spread when you um, follow right behind that funny float with the funny trowel. A lot more cream to push around, in other words. Alright, here's the broom process. This is 100% nylon. This is the soft bristle. They have a white, green, and a black. White being the softest, and black being the, the coarsest, or roughest. And it looks like he's just stopping right at the shade line. You can see that shaded area there. So he's brewing initially just in the sun. And then, he, and then he's going to go back and then take a full stroke all the way across. Also, they're going to go ahead and strip this out, load the lumber, rack the stakes, and wrap this one up. Because it's oiled, all the lumber, freshly oiled, the form lumber just fell away nicely. Here we are, here's Juan touching up the sides, even though it's gonna most likely get backfilled with grass and everything. It's just a nice little touch he threw in there at the end. Anyway, that wraps up this job. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you uh, subscribe, hit the notification button, that way you'll be notified as soon as we post the next video. Have a good day.